Baltimore. What's going on, YouTube fan? It's your boy Tony Two Times, and we back with another episode of the Baltimore Way, man. Y'all know I already appreciate the love and support, like always. Y'all know what I need y'all to do. Be sure to like, comment, share the video. Today we got a special one, man. You feel me? A real special one, but we're gonna get right into it. So today we're gonna talk about the real Marlo Stanfield. But his last name not Stanfield. But let's get right into it. The hit TV show The Wire was based on real police indictments in Baltimore, Maryland. Some of the writers in the show were retired detectives. Some of the characters were based on real individuals from Baltimore, Maryland. The infamous Murphy Holmes Projects in West Baltimore was known for some of the city's most infamous hustlers and hitters. They ran their territories like Fortune 500 companies with soldiers, runners, hitters, all the way up to the boss man. What a lot of people don't know, two brothers were really living this life. No HBO show. Marlo Stanfield was the laid back but vicious boss in the series. His team was small but were feared. Focus on the game is an understatement. He mastered he mastered the game, but before the show, it was Marlo Bates Sr. and Tamir Stanfield. The brothers ran their sessions in the projects Murphy Homes and Westport in the 80s. The streets of Baltimore has always been known for narcotics, and with that comes violence. The two brothers formed their crew and took over the streets. They were organized and focused, making money in the game selling smack. All of their team carried themselves in a certain kind of way. When people saw them, they knew, okay, that was Marlowe's people. Tamir, the laid back brother, was the boss in his own right, a student of the game in the Baltimore streets. The two handled business accordingly, flooded the streets, and making it a priority to take care of the hood, giving back, helping pay bills, looking out for the kids, and blessing his soldiers. Loyalty was everything. Marlowe's come from a big family in which most of his siblings' last names were Stanfield. But having a different father, Marlowe's last name was Bates. In the city, certain family names rang bells. In the 80s, it was still structure in the streets. Marlowe had the cars, money, clothes, but more importantly, the respect. Everybody knew, don't play with the team, and if you did, the consequences could be vicious. The projects in the 80s from East to West Baltimore was known as the place to be. You can get rich by mistake, just being outside and knowing the right people. The game was in its prime. Murphy Holmes had a few key players and the streets knew, but also the Baltimore Police Department knew the crew as well. And they knew the crew demanded respect from all parties involved. Marlowe's lieutenants were stamped and certified and any problems was dealt with accordingly. Allegedly, Marlowe wasn't scared to get his hands dirty himself. Police was desperate, with Marlowe already beating two bodies and being almost a legend at the time, the game was on. Police would bust lower level dealers in Westport and Murphy Homes in hope of getting information on the organization and building the case. After arresting a good bit of people, some started to corroborate. The team was smart though and had their ears to the streets. Tamira was alleged to have hit a witness in Murphy Holmes in the head six times to make an example of anyone thinking of testifying. A four million dollar a year organization in the 80s was coming to an end. Police didn't like the power and respect the team had. Alleged even in Westport, the mailman would give Marlowe and Tamir the mail to pass out to give out the checks on the first of the month. Bird, who was a part of the team, was alleged to carry out some repercussions for some state witnesses, and the phone call was recorded. Phones were tapped. In 1987, Marlowe, Tamir, and a few other members were convicted and given life sentences for alleged hits and other charges. Marlowe felt as though the team was railroaded for political gain and says no one from the show The Wire reached out to him or his people 
He is a changed man now and helping other inmates behind bars, stopping beef and a lot of other stuff, writing books for the kids. And his message to the streets and his people, he felt like at the time they didn't know any better and never knew what they was doing was wrong. That's just how they grew up. And he was helping a lot of people in the process. He wants to expose the situation, saying a lot of indictments were made up. The TV show is a good show, but to some people, this is reality. And to live in it is a whole different game. Man. All right, man. Salute, Marlo, you feel me? Tamir, Bird, you know, the real players that they base this show off of. I mean, I'm pretty sure everybody familiar with The Wire, you know, which is a great show, don't get me wrong. I'm a fan, I can't sit here and lie. I enjoyed the show. Even coming from the city, when you see the corner and the wire, and you looking like, dang, this my city. Like, even though I used to feel like they could have got more characters that was really from the city, but they did a great job. But when I heard Marlo speak, and he was just saying like, how nobody reached out to him, you know what I mean? They ain't put no money on his books, and they made millions and millions of dollars off that show. And I feel like, man, that's how come we gotta look out for each other. You know what I mean? Why not put somebody to the forefront that you know gonna break bread? We'll watch HBO and all these other spots, but we won't even take nobody that's trying to do the same thing from our environment and push them to the forefront. Not just me, anybody, you know? But man, I just wanna send a big salute, you feel me? Hopefully I can reach out to the big guy man and get an interview with him. That'll be super dope. Um, a lot of them trying to get a time back. You know, they fighting the pills. And he was just saying they got railroaded. He was saying it was political. He was saying a lot of indictments was fake. A lot of stuff they said they did was fake. But we always talk about this, how no matter what, they gonna get a conviction. If they want you, they gonna get you. Especially if you move militant. If you move like an army, and you got that structure and you just ain't out here like a wild coon, they gonna get you, you know what I mean? And the real Marlo, man, you know, he was he was feared, but more importantly, he was respected. You know, love overconquers all, you feel me? I used to tell people that all the time. I don't wanna be feared, you feel me? Yeah, I like respect, everybody need their respect. You gotta get your respect, cause without respect, you ain't nothing, you ain't even a man. But at the end of the day, that love, Cause somebody will hurt you if they scared of you. But if they love you, they gonna think twice about it. But yeah, man, this a requested video. This another episode of the Baltimore Way. This the real Marlo story, you feel me? And man, for y'all that don't know nothing about The Wire, go back and watch it. It was a good show, you feel me? But also, man, salute to the real people that went through this. Everybody watching from the outside looking in. But we gotta think, it's individuals that really lived this life, even in the corner. When I did the DeAndre story, that was your real life. So some people really living like this. And a lot of people don't understand that, you know. It's a rough city, but I tell people all the time, it's a beautiful city. I love it, you know what I mean, at the end of the day. Because it make you a, a stronger person. It help you realize certain things. But be sure to like, comment, share the video. I love y'all, fam. I'm out.